everyone, my name is Victoria. Do you want to get into web scraping but don't know where to start? Trust me, I know the feeling. It can be quite intimidating at first. But that's what I'm here for, to help you get started. In today's video, we're going to take a look at five main things you should consider before starting web scraping. The last two are especially important, so make sure to stick until the very end. First, let's talk tools. You'll need a reliable one for scraping the data, especially when it comes to large-scale operation. Now, there are ways you can go about it. Either build your own web scraper or buy it from a service provider. For this, you can make the decision depending on your knowledge and intention. But let's take a quick look at both options. Naturally, developing your own custom tool gives you more freedom and flexibility, so you can have the features you actually need. If you want a basic web scraper for small-scale data, there are tons of tutorials and libraries available to help you. So, it should be fairly easy to build it. On the other hand, if you need large-scale data from several websites, a basic tool like that just won't do. You'll need a sophisticated solution requiring skill, time, and effort. Not only you'll have to build it, but also maintain it. Just something to keep in mind, you know. Meanwhile, buying a web scraper from a third-party service provider is much more convenient. You can get to using it right away and not worry about its maintenance in the future. If there's a technical issue on their end, it will be your provider's responsibility to fix it. On the contrary, with a third-party scraper, you may not get that flexibility in terms of its features. Also, solid web scraping services might be costly. However, if you compare the cost of having a custom web scraper built, you may even save some money. Moving along. Before starting your web scraping journey, you should also bear in mind that websites are constantly changing. Changes happen due to several reasons, such as redesign, update, or maintenance. Now, what does this have to do with web scraping, you may ask? Well, some website changes are minor and won't cause interruptions in your web scraping processes. Meanwhile, some are major and can alter the page's layout, elements, and URLs. Your web scraper should be able to handle these changes. Otherwise, you may receive inaccurate or outdated information. Like I said in the beginning, web scraping can be intimidating at first. What I and my colleagues in the industry like to do is come up with a plan. Before you begin with the project, you should formulate a concrete goal. For example, keeping track of your competitor's pricing changes. Then, you should figure out details like a list of target websites, the frequency, and so on. Finally, you need to think about storing the data. Your data should be organized and structured. Otherwise, you won't be able to analyze it. So these are just the main details to think of when coming up with a plan. All in all, a plan can help you to speed up the scraping process, stay on track, and complete the project on time. Moving on to number four, the legality of web scraping. If you were to look up web scraping, I'm sure you'll come up across the question, is this legal? Within a couple of clicks. In fact, the legality of web scraping is a widely debated topic, so I'll try my best to summarize it. If the data you want to gather is considered public, it should be legal to scrape it. On the contrary, if the data is protected by copyright laws or terms of use, scraping it is illegal. That said, it varies from case to case, but you can check our blog post for some further information on the topic. The link will be in the description. Generally, it's the best to seek professional legal advice about your particular situation. Better safe than sorry. We made it to the number five. So the final thing you should know before getting to web scraping is the technical difficulties associated with it. Let's start with CAPTCHA which is one of the biggest challenges of web scraping. Designed to tell humans and bots apart, CAPTCHA can interrupt your scraping process, which results in errors. The best way to deal with CAPTCHA is to avoid getting it. How? First, make sure your web scraper doesn't move super fast. An unusually fast pace will give it away instantly. 
You should also avoid honeypot traps, which are additional security measures websites implement to avoid bots. We have a whole blog post dedicated to the honeypot trap topic. You can find the link in the description. Finally, it's important that you use a solid web scraper because faulty tools are known to trigger CAPTCHA. Knowing how common of an issue CAPTCHA is, Oxylabs offers a special tool called Web Unblocker. It is an AI-powered solution designed to bypass several anti-boss systems, CAPTCHA included. Another common issue I wanted to touch on is IP blocks. When you're scraping a website, you're sending several requests from the same IP address. Even if you're not doing anything illegal or unethical, the websites can detect it as suspicious activity and ban your IP address. There are several ways to avoid that as well. First, you can use proxies and rotate them between sessions. Just make sure those proxies come from a reputable premium provider. Also, you should use real user agents and switch them up. If you don't know what the user agent is, essentially, it is an HTTP header that contains information about the visitor, the browser, operating system, and more. There are several more tips for avoiding IP bans. We have a dedicated blog post for that, so be sure to check out the description. And those are the five things you should know before starting your web scraping journey. What is your number one tip when it comes to web scraping? Do you agree with my list? I would be super curious to hear your guys' thoughts, so be sure to share them in the comments below. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll be seeing you all later. Bye!